and let's play Everlasting Summer. Oof. Everlasting Summer. All right, for those who did not see last night, oh well, yesterday, I give me a moment. Look at this, yeah, it's it's probably saying this will get soft porn, and we will talk about. Suicide and shit. Right. So I'm guessing save game means saved games. Yeah. Oop. Music is a bit loud. Good enough. All right, so we got the protagonist, uh, 25 year old, maybe, I don't know, 20 ish, probably something. Uh, he's super depressed, he pretty much never leaves his apartment and whatever. Lives in a not a metropolis, megalopolis, he called it. Everybody's so it's still too loud. Good music though. Uh, he's going to a university. Well, he talks a, lo a lot about he has dreams that he forgets all the time. And there's women in these dreams, of course. Uh, we don't know yet if If it's if he's actually dreaming or if he's getting um, uh, what's, the, what's the word apathic catatonic we don't know if he's getting catatonic he's dreaming up this world anyhow we don't know if it's a mental break or if it's he's just having dreams we don't know anything yet but we're in the middle of a dream if, Jumped on a bus to go to university, um, uh, a class reunion from university, and fell asleep on the bus. It was middle of winter. Then he woke up. See here, a uh, summer landscape. It's no people around, but there, uh, this there are these gates to the summer camp or whatever that are open and I think he's moving inside I think that's as far as we got so let's go yeah exactly the kind of bus which takes you to places beyond your understanding if you carelessly fall asleep hey, it is a dream or something I gave a nervous chuckle came out by itself sporadically because this wasn't the right place or time to law why wasn't it though oh well, he doesn't he doesn't know because it feels very vivid he can't decide if it's a dream or real life if, or he has been hypothesizing different things like alien abductions that he's dead and went to hell because he couldn't think of heaven for some reason well a lot of this no, who knows but where on earth is the driver i cautiously sat down on the curb uh, beside the bus and started to wait hmm. nothing happened my patient didn't last long it wouldn't my anxiety seemed to have reached its peak uh, and I started to go slightly mad. 
In such a situation, anyone would have probably felt something similar. Probably most people. Aliens and parallel universes were gone from my imagination and leaving only void and darkness. Is this how everything will end? How my life will end? But I wanted to do so much. There were so many things that I had no time, that I had no time for yet. Were there? Like yesterday, when we read yesterday, it was all, oh, I don't want to do anything. Did I read into it? I don't know. I was overwhelmed by the idea this was definitely the end. Yeah, like he fell asleep on the ball, died, and he's having this experience, like waking lifestyle. But why? It's not fair. Surely I'm no worse than anyone else. God, why? with that blink. Oh, right. Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started to roll in the, gla in the grass. I wonder how I can... Oh. Um, how do I... Is there a key bind to move forward? Space. Ah. Why? With that, what did I do? Why me? But my cries were only heard by the speechless statues of the pioneers and a bird on a tree, which immediately flapped its wings and took off, crying out something in its own bird language, as if laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt its after-dinner nap. I was left breathless from weeping and just lay quietly sobbing occasionally. After a while, I managed to pull myself together. My mind cleared up a bit, as if terror and fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, what is all this for? Yeah. Doesn't look like an experiment either. It's just, it's just some crazy coincidence, then there's probably no threat. Anyway, for now it seems uh, there's no danger. Panic was soon gone. Of course, the blood was still pounding in my temples, and my hands were still shaking, but at least uh, I could think clearly now. Right now, there is nothing that I can really change anyway. No matter how much I think or how mad I get, it would only make things, make things worse. Until some actual facts appear, there is really no point in making guesses. In any case, I won't learn anything by lounging about here. This camp, if of course it really is a camp, looked like the only place where people could be. So I, I decided to go there. Good decision. And hardly had I reached the gates when a girl came out from behind them. He had a dream about this girl. I think he asked him to come along. Wearing a pioneer uniform. My logic didn't let me down this time. Then again, a pioneer uniform in the 21st century. Then again, then again, a girl here. I froze, unable to take a step. Felt very much like running away. Yeah, he can't talk to girls, he said. Running as far away as I could from this place, far from this bus, gates, statues, and far from this bloody bird with its siesta. 
just running, free like wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets passing by, winking at the galaxies, running, becoming a pulsar ray and turning into a vestigial radiation, running to face the unknown. Run and no matter where, as long as it's far away from this place. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled. I could not help but notice her beauty, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts work independently of consciousness. Yeah. They do indeed. Mostly, not completely but yeah and while only five percent of the brain is responsible for cognitive processes uh, i don't know about that that sounds that sounds it's a gross simplification of how how our brains work, I think. Like we have, uh, like the part of our brain that's responsible for doing a movement like this. Uh, it sits in the parietal system. If you see my hand here and imagine that this is a brain, like here's the temporal lobe. Uh, yeah. Right. Like if I have my head here, and this is my brain inside my head. This is the temporal lobe, and like here is the frontal lobe, and like here is the occipital, like here is the vision, the back of the head, the front of the head, like the middle of the head. Like we have a place right here called the par... Uh, I don't know. It's a lobe. It's a parietal lobe or something. It's responsible for a lot of movement. Like all movement is from up to down here. Uh, and in it's not responsible for cognitive processes, but any movement can be like it can be within consciousness and it's a cognitive process, right? So it depends on how you look at it, but five percent of the brain are responsible for cognitive processes, it's a gross simplification, it doesn't really work. The remaining 95% are always busy sustaining life. And in particular, ensuring stable functioning with uh, of the hormonal system. I desperately wanted to get less complicated and stop thinking in formal quotes from an encyclopedia. Though my thoughts appeared one by one, being stupid, out of place, as if taking from... Oh, hello. Uh, hello, Russia. I'm from Sweden. Uh, have you played this game? It's, it is Russian, I believe. It's, I don't know how much is lost in, in, in translation. Uh, as if taking from an internal monologue of the hero of some junky soft cover crime fiction book. All right. A pretty Slavic face, long braids that look like two armful of fresh hay and blue eyes you can drown in. All right. Hi, you must have just arrived, the pioneer girl said. You got a reply. Oh my God. Get your shit together, man. Reply. Um, yeah. All right then, welcome. He smiled broadly. Strange, it looked as if I had... Uh, strange, it looked as if I had just a normal girl in front of me. But I shouldn't have returned here. The woods and fields seemed better. Yeah, he tried to run away earlier. But what shall I do next? Try to speak with her as if she was human or run away or what? Uh, I will, um, Miku says, I will listen to the text, if anything, because I can't communicate fluently in English. Well, 
Nice to have you here. Maybe you'll learn some English. Always good to practice. If you're interested in... The blood was pumping unbearably in my head, tearing it apart from the inside. A little bit more and the poor pioneer girl would be splattered with the gruesome contents of my skull. It's having a rough day. What's so funny about that? The girl looked me over, sent shivers down my spine, and my knees started to tremble. N -n nothing Seats. All right. Great then. Great what? What's so great about that? Suddenly a thought crossed my mind. To hell with it all. Forget about the bus behind me. The fact that it was winter yesterday and summer today. I wanted to rip off my itchy sweater and just accept that all of this is actually happening. Everything is as it should be. All this is for the best. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, if we assume that it is a dream, then yeah, have the best time you can. Semyon, uh, would you happen to know, he says. You should go to our camp leader. It is a camp. She'll tell you everything. Look, you go straight ahead to the square and then turn left. You'll see several small cabins. She pointed at the gates as if uh, I knew what was behind them. Hmm. Well, you can ask someone where Olga Dmitrievna's cabin is. Sorry for butchering your pronunciations here. It's a petro patronymic, a derivative of a person's father's name. In this cave, Dmitri, Dmitri Vena, hmm? uh, put by Russians after the person's first name as a sign of respect or formal address. Patronymic. So it's like a second name. Patronymic. Like that, the daughter of Dmitri. Kind of, if I understand it correctly. We don't do that in Swedish anymore. We did it earlier. But Olga, son of Dimitri, I think. I, um, got it? Of course, I didn't. Well, I've got to go now, says the girl. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared through the gates. It seemed as if, to her, I was something ordinary. And all of this show with the bus and the travels while awake or asleep were troubling only me, while everything here just was the way it was supposed to be. Camp leader, pioneer uniform. What, are they doing historical reenactments here? I hope I won't find Lenin standing atop an armored car in the in this square. Even that would not surprise me right now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. A mere 50 meters ahead, a small one-story house popped up uh, on the left side. The sign near the door said, Clubs. I was about to come closer when the door suddenly opened and a short girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty face gave me the impression of one suffering for the fate of the whole of mankind with truly, truly universal sorrow. Oh, oh, looks like a sad one. As soon as she saw me, the girl froze as if frightened. I froze too, considering what was the best to do, uh, considering what was the best to do, to approach first or wait until she showed some initiative. Or maybe run away after. Although this last option was constantly being suggested only by my self-preservation instinct. At least 
that's what I'd like to believe. Maybe. Fight or flight. Self-preservation. Yeah. Not the worst human instinct, but by far, but far from the most logical. It's not logical. It's supposed to be instant. Fight or flight is it's fast. It's supposed to be fast. Not the thinking, analyzing. Just go, go, go. If this instinct played poker against deductive abilities, the outcome would be predetermined. Maybe. And those deductive abilities, or at least their semblance, were hinting to me that there were no there was no need to be afraid of this girl. Indeed. Suddenly somebody jumped out of nearby bushes. The girl was wearing a broad, bright red t-shirt with USSR written on it. Such a perfect, perfect reproduction of the age. Yeah, so it's historical. She looked quite short from a distance and was probably younger than both Pioneer girls. The one at the gate and this girl at the door of the clubs. At last I decided to come closer, but the USSS, USSR, as I called her in my mind, jumped towards the first girl and started telling her something while, 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 while wildly waving her arms. Lots of woo woo woo. The other girl, in turn, seemed confused and lowered her gaze, remaining silent. I would have probably continued to uh, observe the amusing dialogue, but the USSR suddenly pulled something out of her pocket and started waving it in front of the first girl's face. This something turned out to be a grasshopper. Eee! said the pioneer girl. First girl squealed. Yeah. She must not be too keen on insects, as she instantly rushed off towards the place where Lenin presumably made his speech about the workers and peasants' revolution. That is to say, towards the square. The USSS, the USSR girl glanced at me, grinned playfully, and dashed after her. Not a bad, bad start to the day. I have absolutely no clue where I am. Besides that, there are some kids here role-playing as pioneers. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my home. It might even be a different reality. And this was indeed a reality. I mean, everything around me seemed so real. If a little embellished, that I was starting to think that the in fact, my previous life could have been just a dream. And what am I supposed to do now? You're supposed to find Olga. Dmitri... I was picking at the... I was picking at the cracked paving stones with my shoe on right, and staring en aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I have to come up with some decision. Yes, proper decision on anxiety. That's when I uh, when I recalled myself rolling on the grass, weeping. I cringed in disgust. Perhaps it's uh, another instinct when all energy, when all energy for whimpering and self-pitying is used up, the body either goes into hibernation or mobilizes its reserves. Yeah. Mine seemed to have chosen the second option, option because out of the blue I found determination to figure out what was going on. Don't have any choice in the matter. And in order to do that I had to act like a man, like a human, to maintain the dignity of a representative of my own world. 
I followed the path to the left on the on the right side of which stood small cabins, apparently the homes of the local pioneers. Actually, they looked quite cozy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I had never been part of its children's organizations. Neither the pioneers, nor even the younger October children. I imagined the daily life of a typical pioneer camp a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks wake up at six o'clock, played by a siren. One minute to make your bed, then join in the formation on the grid square. So it's so like a military thing. Or wait. Yeah, could I be confusing it with something else? Yeah, full metal alchemist you're confusing it with. Suddenly something struck me in the back. I staggered, but I remained on my feet, turned around and prepared to fight heroically for my life. But all I found was another girl standing before me. My mouth hung open in surprise. Pick your jaw off, up off the ground, said the girl. I closed my mouth. The same pioneer u uniform, but the way she was wearing it looked, uh, let's say, provocative. Like all the girls I had met here before, this one was rather cute, but her overly arrogant expression killed any desire to get to know her better. You here, are you? said the girl. Fine, see ya. She threw a threatening glance at me and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn at the corner. Who knows what else he might have been up to. The most interesting thing was that even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. She did not, she did not give off the feeling of some da deadly danger, except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. At last, I, I managed to make it to the square. There was no Lenin on an armed car, car, although one could easily expect something like that after all this had happened. Instead, however, a monument to a certain comrade uh, towered in the middle of the square. The, letter, the letters on the pedestal read Genda. Must be some big figure in the party. There were some small benches at the sides. But it's quite pleasant here. Where did that girl tell me to go? To the left or the right? Please don't tell me I'm supposed to remember that. To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Mm -hmm. Why am I going there anyway? All right, I've decided to pretend to be normal. So, to the right. Pretty sure she said to the left, though. Through a small grove. Came out at a pier. Must have taken a wrong turn. Yep. Hey, wrong way. I turned to, towards the voice. That first girl stood before me, and she's pretty much naked. Now what did I tell you? Take a left at the square, wasn't it? It changed from her pioneer uniform into a bikini. Not a bikini, that's underwear. Oh, I still haven't introduced myself. My name is Slavia. Actually, my full name is Slaviana. Everyone calls me Slavia. So you can too. Um, yeah. Still felt a bit confused, so I could not come up with any more meaningful answers. What's your name? It felt like she could see right through me. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I, uh, yeah. Semyon. Nice to meet you, Semyon. All right, I'm almost done here. Could you wait here a minute? I'm going to change and we'll go to Olga Dmitrievna together. Agreed? Uh, agreed. After this exchange, she ran off, sat on the pier, and let my feet hang. After this exchange, she ran off. I sat on the pier and let my feet hang into the water. I was wearing heavy winter boots, 
but in such weather there was nothing wrong in getting my feet wet. Wet. Oh hello, quiche quiche. Furthermore, it let me cool off. Furthermore, it let me cool off myself a little. Looking at the river, I was brainstorming and processing everything that I had that has happened. If this is some kind of conspiracy, it's a weird one. Even too friendly at times. No, it really looks more like a random event. Some entirely incomprehensible random event. Shall we go, says Slavia. Slavia was standing beside me, dressed in the pioneer uniform again. Let's go, I said. I've been here for a very short time, but of all the people I've met, she looks the least suspicious. However, this fact is already suspicious itself. Yeah. We walk to the square. The USSR girl and the girl who hit me in the back were there, chasing each other. Is that some kind of game they're playing? Uliana, enough running. I'll tell everything to Olga Dmitrievna. Aye, aye, Captain, says Uliana. I decided not to question Slavia for a while about what was going on or going on or the local residents. Better meet with this mysterious Olga Dmitrievna first. Sounds like she's the boss here. We walk past the rows of almost identical cabins, some of which looked like fat beer barrels, while others looked more like household sheds. Finally, Slavia stopped in front of a smallish one-story cabin. It looked like an artist's painting, with faded paint, uh, Chipping here and there with the age was sparkling in the sun. Window shutters, slightly ajar, were swaying almost unnoticeably in the wind. And huge lilac bushes were growing at the sides. It seemed as if this ramshackle hut was drowning in a storm of purple silk, and the lilacs, like some elemental force, were inexorably destroying the troops troop leader's house of oh, the troop leader can I have some water what are you standing around for let's go Slavia snapped me out of my daydreaming Stop teasing Lena already, said a voice. <clears throat> Holy shit. Rina? Sounds like there's someone inside. Indeed, a moment later the door swung open and Juliana ran out and dashed past me with some mischievous grin. The pigtailed girl came out next. Don't let it bother you, Lena. So her name is Lena. Gotta be thankful it's not Rena, at least. But I don't. Instead of finishing her sentence, she blushed and quickly headed towards the square. For some reason, I felt like turning and following her with my eyes, but Slavia said, Come. We entered the cabin. Inside it looked something similar to what I'd imagined. Two beds, a table, a couple of chairs, a simple carpet on the floor, a wardrobe. Nothing special, but uh, at the same time, it felt homely and cozy, although this room was almost in the same state of disorder as my own flat. The girl standing near the window appeared to be about 25 years old. Nature had obviously gifted her with a pretty face and a good body. 
at least one thing you can uh, one thing keep you happy in this pandemonium the locals are beautiful you're finally here says the camp leader excellent my name is Olga Dmitrievna I'm the camp leader nice to meet you I'm Semyon I decided to talk as if I wasn't surprised by anything that was going on. She came closer. We've been expecting you since early morning. We have been expecting you, right? So, you've been expecting me? Yes, of course. And when does the next bus come? Because I... And why do you need it? Yeah, right. Why would I need it? I guess I shouldn't ask direct questions. People here may react to them quite unlike how I'd prefer. prefer. And I doubt I'd get any answers. Gotta keep the mystery going, you know? That's, that's, that's a narrator trick. Like, you just get teleported to another magical world. And we just... Play along, aunts ask no questions. I'm pretty sure a normal person would ask, what the fuck is going on? I'm pretty sure. But who knows? I've never been in this situation. No reason, just curious. By the way, where are we exactly? Our mailing address, I mean. I wanted to send a letter to my parents and tell them I got here fine. He stated earlier in the in the show that he wasn't very good at talking to people, but he was and he was nervous and he was fight and flight and everything, but he could figure out that lie, that trick. So it's very clever. He's a very clever dude. For some reason I had the desperate idea that if I played along I would find something out. Oh, but your parents called just half an hour ago. Sent their regards to you. Oh, well, that's a surprise. So, can I call them? Because I forgot to tell them something before I left. No. Give me a sweet, spontaneous smile. Why not? We don't have a phone here. Wait, what? Then, how could my parents make a call to here? I've just come back from the uh, district's central town. I talked with them there. Oh, so that's how it is. And can I somehow get to the town? No. She kept the same smile. Oh, you're kidnapped, dude. Why not, says Simeon, the kidnapped dude. Because the next bus only comes in a week. There's a bus outside. We just saw it. I decided not to inquire how the troop leader managed to get there and back. I would not get any answers anyway. All this time, Slavia was standing next to me and seemed to find nothing odd in our conversation. Oh, we need to find a uniform for you. I've got absolutely no desire to put on pioneer shorts or wear the ridiculous red neckerchief. However, wearing winter clothes in summer isn't a great idea either. Right, thank you. I wonder if I'm the only one here who finds it strange that someone's wearing a coat and winter boots in such heat. Rightio, I'll be off then and you can get yourself acquainted with the camp, says Olga. Don't forget to come to dinner in the evening. Having said that, she walked out of the cabin. No, walked is not the right word. She rushed out. I ended up uh, alone with Slavia. I must got, go too. Got things to do. Take a walk, look around the, the camp a bit. See you in the evening. So we're just left to our own devices. Great. If there's no threat or catch to this, then this reality, as embodied by Slavia, becomes more and more appealing. For the first time today, I realized that it was awfully hot here. 
although obviously my winter clothes were to blame for that. I took off my coat and dropped it onto the bed. Uh, my pullover followed it and I was now wearing only the shirt. That's much better. All I could do now, now was follow their advice and go looking around the camp. I'll try to find something out in the meantime. Passing the local resident, residential district, I saw a pioneer guy coming my way. Oof, finally. Man, well, that's not a man, that's a boy. And he was really a pioneer guy, well, a guy, not a pioneer girl. Apparently there were men in this kingdom of Amazons. Hello, you're new here. You must be Simeon, right? My name. And how do you... Oh, everyone knows already. I am electronic. By the way, the real one. You can call me that. Electronic. Seriously? That is name? Electronic, the real one. Things were going from crazy to completely insane. Ah. Electronic was a robot character appearing in a popular popular Soviet film and book series. He looked like an exact copy of a school kid called Sergei Chisikov. Chisikov? Chesikov. You know. Alright. Liana calls me Cheesy. Cheesy? On toast. With mushrooms? Because my la last name is Chisikov? I see. Let me show you around. I accepted his offer, as it would have taken much longer to get to know this place alone. Fine, let's go. We ended up at the square again, as if this place uh, was all there is to this camp. Then I was sitting on one of the benches, reading some book. Electronic confidently approached her. Hello, Lena. Meet a new guy, Semyon. He started briskly. Hello. Well, you could say we already met, in a way. Yes. She looked away from the book for a moment, glanced at me, blushed, and went back to reading, as if not noticing that we were still here. All right, let's go on, says Electronic. I was at first surprised that meeting this girl was reduced to a couple of words, but then I thought it was better that way. Electronics vigorous, electronics vigorous activity did not fit well with Lena's shyness. Let's go. Actually, I need to go get some new water. <laughs> I'll be right back. Right, and we're back. Oh, damn it. Got to do this again. Whoop. Like so. Next, we came to some building, and this here. I oh, know, this is where you consume organic food. Yeah, something like that. On the canteen's porch stood the unfriendly girl who hit me in the back earlier. At the sight of her, my joking mood vanished in a blink of an eye. Really, now, now is not the best time to be pulling this guy's leg, even though he is quite hilarious. First, I need to figure out uh, what's what here, or at least where I am. Uh, her over there, that's Alisa. Um, 
Dvachevskaya? Dvachevskaya? Sorry. Be careful around her. He spoke in a whisper. Don't ever risk calling her Dvache. She doesn't like that. Dva means two in Russian. The whole nickname sounds exactly like Tush. Tush in, uh, in Russian. A reference to the late Tush Russian anonymous image board. Oh, it's, it's like 4chan, but Tushan. What did you say? What did you call me? Oh man, she's pissed. She must have heard him. In the blink of an eye, Alisa jumped down from the porch and dashed towards us. All right, you'll, you'll manage from here onwards. Electronic took his heels. I didn't do anything. Do nothing. Alisa, running past, stopped for a moment and growled. I'll deal with you later. Deal with me? What did I do wrong? I added a forced guilty smile to my words. But what am I guilty of? She made no reply and carried on chasing Electronic. Looks like I'll have time to kill alone, waiting for dinner. I decided to go east. At least in the direction where east would be in my world. Nice. Soon after I found myself near a football pitch. A game was in full swing in there. Nice. So there's a lot of people here. I guess watching it for a bit wouldn't do any harm. In my childhood and teen years, I was not a bad player myself. And even, th and even though, even though, and even thought, ah, oh, sorry, Ugh. I was not a bad player and I even thought about going professional, but a few injuries in, in a row killed my desire to risk my health for the sake of an uncertain chance in the game. Kids of different ages were running around the pitch. I could see a boy of about 10 and a girl about 14 years old. A girl. Hey, that's Juliana. All right, so she plays football. What's so surprising? She seems like a restless one after all. I was standing quite far from the pitch, but she still noticed me. Hey you. Juliana shouted. Wanna play? I didn't know how to answer. On the one hand, running around for 10 minutes is no big deal. On the other hand, any wrong move in my situation could be my final one. But in any case, my attire wasn't suitable for this weather. I played in winter boots and warm jeans, I would sweat like a pig. And playing barefoot and without jeans would be simply unethical. Maybe another time, all right? I shouted in response, turned around and walked back. I was followed by Uliana's screams about my pants or about me being a pansy or something like that. Nice. Evening was falling. Uh, evening was falling, making me feel tired and empty after a day wasted with no real purpose. What did you do all day? strolling around. I came back to the square, sat down on a bench and gave an exhausted sigh. I'd better sit here and wait for dinner. After all, it's easier to search for... <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, I'm sorry. It's easier to search for answer when you're not hungry. They do give food for the people here, right? You know, it's curious how the simplest human needs can break the will to ponder on things, to strive for something. For example, I feel hungry now, so I care much less about where I am or what's happening to me. Could great people also be affected by this?
And in that case, how did uh, Spartan Spartacus start the slave uprising in ancient times? Well, actually, uh, I learned recently that hunger is often quite the illusion. I don't know if you heard about that. Um, do they call it intermittent fasting? Whatever. Uh, they had such good rhetoric, so they convinced me uh, to try it out. So I only eat uh, at 12 uh, lunchtime and at 5 uh, in the afternoon. Rest of the day, I eat nothing. At first, I got hungry all the time, but it took like two or three days. Now I don't get hungry anymore. Well, I do get hungry. I'm starting to get hungry now because it's a routine. Hunger comes from routine. Uh, at least for me. So you get used to stuff. We are very resilient beings, we humans. I can only conclude that I am not a great person, and it does not really matter which mechanism uh, I serve as a greater gear in. Society, the Matrix, or a weird pioneer camp. That's actually... Is he already out of his depression? Because this here does not sound like depression anymore. Which mechanism I serve as a gear in? Well, maybe. I mean, this might be... Oh, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. My thoughts were interrupted by the sound of bells chiming from a loudspeaker on a light pole. It must be the dinner call. I headed towards the canteen. It was a good thing that I now knew where it was. Olga Dmitrievna was there standing on the porch. Actually, I'm, I'm not going to butcher the name anymore. Why not just call her Olga? I stopped and looked close, closely at her as if I were expecting something. She looked back at me for a while but at last came closer. Simeon, what are you waiting for? Come in already. Yes, nothing bad can happen if I go with her. My stomach backed me up here. Yeah, a lot of people. The two of us went inside. The canteen looked like a canteen. I had a chance to visit a factory canteen at some point in my life. This one was exactly the same, just maybe a bit cleaner and a bit more modern. Metal chairs and table, glazed tiles on the walls and on the floor, unsofi unsophisticated tableware and the occasional crack. Guess that's what a canteen in a pioneer camp is supposed to look like. Simeon, wait a moment, we'll find you a place to sit. She looked around the place. Bye. Mm -hmm. But just Skaya, hold it right there. Sorry. Olga uh, shouted at Elisa, who was passing by. What? What's up with your clothes? asked Olga. Elisa answered, anything wrong with them? Indeed, her attire looked somewhat provocative. Get your uniform nice and neat right now. All right, all right. Lisa got her shirt right and walked past, shouting, shooting an unpleasant glare at me. So, where can we find you a place to sit? There weren't, uh, there weren't a lot of free seats. Go over there, next to Uliana. Um, maybe I, yeah, it's fine. The food's already on the table too. I had no other choice but to accept. Of course. There was the probability that the cutlets were poisoned with cure air, the mashed potatoes generally seasoned with arsenic, and the glass filled with an excellent antifreeze instead of compot. Compot? In common Russian language, kotleta, cutlet, is minced meat. Fried or baked in the shape of a ball or cylinder, cylinder close to American patties. Compote is a drink made by boiling fresh or dried fruit in a large amount of water. Compote in... Right. 
But it all looked so tasty that I had no chance to resist. Hey, said Juliana, what do you want? I replied rather rudely to you, Juliana, who was sitting next to me. Why didn't you play football with us? Because of my clothes, said I, pointing to the source of the problem. Oh, all right then, eat. However, there wasn't much left to eat. Just lower the volume a little bit. That should be fine. However, there wasn't much left to eat. My cutlet was miss missing from my plate. Only she could have done it. No, more precisely, none but Uliana could have done it. Give me back my cutlet. In a big family, you snooze, you lose. It can't cost you a cutlet if you it can cost you a cutlet if you're careless. Give it back, I'm telling you. Oh man. She took it from us, so we attempt to take it back. Follow the norm. I looked at her menacingly and was about to reach out my hand. See, I don't have it. And indeed, Liana's plan plate was empty. It seemed that this little girl eats as fast as she steals someone's cutlasses. Take it easy, we'll work something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. There was no point in following her. If they wanted to poison me here, they could have done it in a much easier way. About a minute later, Uliana returned and handed to me the plate with a steaming, steaming hot cutlet on it. Here's one for the starving. Thanks. It was all I could say. I was so hungry that, hungry that my suspicion were gone in a flash. I picked up the cutlet with my fork and... What the? Some bug! No, not a bug, an insect! It's got legs, it's wiggling! Light fell to the floor and <laughs> broke into pieces. The chair hit me hard on my leg while falling. I've disliked insects since I was a child, but uh, when these creepy crawlies appeared in my plate, that's just way too much. Indeed. You little... Liana seemed ready for such a twist and was already at the door, laughing as she had just heard a fresh stand-up comedy joke. He's a pro proper practical joker. He dashed after her. We ran out of the canteen. We were just a few dozen meters apart. I felt I could catch this little girl easily. We ran through the square, past the club's house, and ran into the forest path. I started to gasp for breath. I should have quit smoking, I guess. Liana passed out of sight on the next turn. It can't be true that she managed to get away from me. Simply can't. I stopped and tried to catch my breath again. Night was falling. Looks like I'm lost. It's a bad idea to stay in the woods at night. Better get back, back to the camp. However, I had absolutely no clue which way to go. Well, gotta choose at random. I wondered for quite some time in the forest. Ooh. And even thought about crying for help. But I finally found the camp's fence beyond the trees. Everything fell back into place. The bus is gone, I mumbled quietly. On the other hand, there was nothing strange about that. The bus couldn't have stayed there forever. On the other hand, it meant there, there was someone driving the bus. Because buses do not drive themselves. Or do they? This world seemed too normal. But every event here had, uh, here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation and a surreal one. 
Certainly the driver could have just been off for a snack and I left too soon and that's why in any case this is not the place for me. Whether that bus drives itself or or not was probably an important question. It was much more important to know how I had gotten here after all. At all. I mean. And where this here was. The fields and the woods stretching towards the horizon had no answers. There was nothing familiar about them. A strange, odd and alien world. At the same time, it was absolutely not frightening. Either my self-preservation instinct decided to resign from its job, or all this running around the camp and looking, uh, running around the camp and the local pioneers had lulled me so much with their carefree normality that I was simply forgetting what had happened to me just a couple of hours ago. Although I probably just had no strength left to worry. All I wanted was some peace, calm, calmness. I wanted to just have a break from it all. And only after that would I continue looking for answers, ready and reloaded. However, that would be some time later. What about now? Can I allow myself to relax? It got completely dark, and the, in any case, it was better to spend the night in the camp, for sure. I was about to head back when someone came up silently from behind. Slavia, it was Slavia, and she said, Hello, what are you doing here so late? Semyon, it was Slavia standing before me. I was so surprised that I jumped. So, you didn't catch Juliana, did you? She smiled. I nodded disappointingly and sighed. No wonder. No one ever has. Yeah, she's a real rocket girl. She could have found better use for her energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. You didn't manage to have dinner after all. Indeed, I had completely forgotten about my hunger. But after these words of hers, my stomach drew attention uh, to itself by giving a treacherous traitorous rumble. Slavia smiled. Let's go then. What? The canteen still open? It's all right. I have the keys. Keys? Yes. I, mean, I have the keys to all the facilities in this camp. How come? Well, I'm something like the camp leader's aide here. I see. Well, let's go. It was an offer you can't refuse. When we reached the square, Slavia stopped in her tracks. Excuse me, I should warn my roommate that uh, that I'll be late. So she, uh, she's so punctual herself that she'll be worried otherwise. You go on to the canteen and I'll come in a minute, all right? All right. I really did not expect to find someone aside from myself there in such a late hour. That somebody was apparently trying to hopelessly open the door. Without any secret thoughts, walked up onto the porch. The lock picker turned out to be Elisa. Should have probably kept off and waited. She looked at me intently for a while and then said, Don't you stand me, give me a hand or something. Meaning, help me open the door. Why? Because I want some buns and kefir. Dinner wasn't big enough. Um, is that really a good idea? Aren't you hungry yourself, huh? Juliana didn't let you have normal dinner, did she? She smiled sarcastically. That's true, she didn't. It's fine, Slavia will, uh, will come now and... What? Guess I shouldn't have said that. I'm off then, and you'll pay for this. You owe me two already. Having said that, Elisa disappeared into the night. What was the first one? Hmm. Slavia didn't keep me waiting for too long. 
Everything all right? Yeah, why are you asking? No reason, it's nothing. It would be better if I didn't tell her about Elisa. Everything's fine. I said that and immediately heard a note of dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go? As for Slavia, she seemed not to have noticed anything, or at least she was pretending she hadn't. We entered the canteen. Wait a bit, I'll go get something. I sat down on a chair and obediently waited for my savior. My dinner was simple, a few buns and a glass of kefir. No wonder, I bet hungry pioneers finished off everything. However, even that was far better than most of my usual diet. Flavia sat across the table and looked at me while I was eating. Is there something on my face? No, just... She smiled. So how did you like your first day in the camp? Well, I don't really know. Silly too. <sighs> it's silly to ask someone who suddenly found himself a different reality whether he liked the food in the canteen, the camp leader, or his assigned hut. It's all right, you'll soon get used to it. Flavia stared out the window dreamily. Frankly speaking, I have no desire to get used to such things. But as for her, she doesn't know, or at least she wants me to think she has that she doesn't. Well, all in all, it's nice here. Uh, I had to somehow break the awkward silence. Do you think so? She asked without any interest. Yeah, this place is so... I wanted to say retro, but I managed to hold it back. After all, it was retro for me. What about them? Might be the only kind of life they knew if the term life was applicable here at all. So how? She watched me closely, as if something important dependent, dependent, depended on my answer. Well, I don't know. Lovely. Yeah, it's lovely here. I guess you're right. She smiled again. It's very good that you think so. Why? Well, not everybody likes it here. And what about you? Me? Yes. I love it here. It's great. Then you don't need to worry about what others, other people think. Yeah. Well, I don't really worry. Slavia laughed. This conversation seemed to be leading me far astray from here. And I wanted to get to... And you worried yourself? Oh, alright. The conversation he wanted to get to. Really, why do you say so? Well, when someone is chewing so intensely... I'm sorry? It's okay. I couldn't bring myself to be more cautious around this girl. But why her in particular? Why not any other local inhabitant? Every one of them looked completely normal to me. Precisely normal. So normal it sends chill down, chills down my spine and into my marrow. Normal, not like a neighbor with power, with a power drill in one hand and a subwoofer in the other. Not like a passenger you often meet in a subway or a public transport. Not like a co-worker at the next table in an open plan office. And not even like a friend uh, who only differ from other hu humans. His co constant insistence. All of them looked normal, as I would expect them to be, with their own downsides, but without any superpowers. And Slavia was also cute. I glanced at her stealthily, not knowing what to say. I'm sorry, I wanted to show you the camp, but was ran. Slavia says, I'm sorry. I wanted to show you the camp, but was ran off my feet. I didn't miss uh, anything while on my own, I guess. Are you sure you haven't missed anything at all? 
She smiled so brightly that I had to drop my eyes in confusion. Well, how would I know? It's my first day here. Okay, and what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, the canteen, the football field. And what about the beach? Just from afar. You really should go there, or let's do it together. Yeah, okay, we will. Her naturalness started to scare me, but then I thought, what if everything happens here, it's how it's supposed to be, and this world looks strange only to me, while for them it is normal. Maybe I was thrown into the past. Yes, that would uh, explain a lot. Can I ask a stupid question? No. Clavia smiled and stood up from the table. It's late. Can you find uh, the way to Olga Dmitri Vienna's by yourself? Of course I can, but why should I go there? She'll settle you with someone. What for? Probably the question seemed stupid because Slavia, Slavia bursted into a good-natured laughter. You need to sleep somewhere, right? That makes sense. Fine, I'll be off then. Good night. Night. Strange that she left in such a hurry. A bundle of keys uh, left in the door lock caught my attention. I was gonna catch up I was going to catch up to Slavia, but where does she live? And knocking every door during the middle of the night didn't sound like a bright idea. Since we're going to Olga's we can take the keys to Olga. I'd better take them. I'll give them back tomorrow because who knows what will happen here tonight. Such thoughts gives me chill and Give me chills, and it's it's me who needs to be careful here in the first place. The night, though dark, wasn't silent at all. One could hear chirping crickets, the song of the night birds, and rustling trees from everywhere. A sudden desire to follow Slavia's advice and go to the camp's leader's cabin appeared. I don't know why the sight of the unknown bronze builder of Communism put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that had happened today. Actually, if he's going to start recalling, this is a good spot because it's lunchtime for me. Well, let's say that day one. Save game. Yes. And let's make a secondary save. Like so. And... Uh, Let's head up for lunch. See you tomorrow if you want to continue listening, I suppose, or catch it on YouTube.